My Hello World application here is basically complete. I have fully functioning main and renderer process code set up. In my main process, I'm requiring in another file auto updater, and then I'm calling, it exports an init method, and I'm calling that init method on application ready. My auto updater file wraps Electron's auto updater module. You can see I've already set it up a little bit. I'm bringing in um, a few dependencies. I'm getting the application version. Um, I'm, so I'm exporting the init method. And uh, in my init method here, I'm just logging some events. The Electron's auto updater module emits several events um, that, are, that kind of form the, the auto update lifecycle. So I'm logging those events out. And then I have a prompt uh, update function here that's incomplete. And so the first thing we need to do is set up our update URL. Let's go ahead and do that. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to use um, a local host server to serve my updates. Because I'm doing a very basic server-side implementation for my auto-update server, I'm going to have separate URLs for Windows and Mac. So we're going to check if it's Mac. So and then here, we'll say if is Mac. Mac is going to request a Mac.json file from our update server, and Windows doesn't need to do anything. On Mac, the native update framework that Electron wraps calls a URL that returns a specific HTTP status and JSON object, which it'll use to check if there's an update for it to download. Because we're doing a very basic server-side implementation, we're just going to call an actual JSON file and then decide on the client if there needs to be an update. Let's look at what our update server looks like. I'm just using a simple file server to host these. I'm using HTTP-server, which I've installed globally. So the Mac.json file here is pretty simple. The only required field here is the URL field. You can see I've already set it to the next version of my application, which will be Hello World version 1.0.1. The client will check this version against its local version to see if there needs to be an update. So before we can check for updates, we need to tell Electron Auto Updater what the, U what the update URL is. So we're going to call set feed URL, and we'll pass our update URL. So now we need to tell it to check for updates. Let's implement check for updates. If it's Mac, we're going to do, we're going to call check for Mac update, which we haven't implemented yet. That'll return a promise and a Boolean that tells us if, if, if there is an update for us to download. So if a has update is true, we will tell the auto updater to check for updates. Basically, because we're, we're doing the version checking logic in our Electron application is the reason that we have to do this. So let's implement check for Mac update. So I'm going to use Axios here to make the HTTP request. So it's going to, so the update URL, so it's going to get our Mac.json file. So I'm going to say if the status is 200 and another dependency I added was Semver. Semver is used by NPM internally to compare those version strings. So we're going to call Semver greater than, and we're going to, we're going to see if the Mac.json file, if that version is greater than our local version. So you'll remember our version here is uh, coming straight from our package.json up here. So back up here in our check for updates function, we'll add an else and handle windows. And Windows is easy. We don't actually have to have any special handling for Windows. We can just tell Windows to check for updates without anything else. Okay, and one last thing we want to add is when an update is downloaded, we'll pass our callback handler. Um, this is when we want to prompt the user to update. So basically what will happen is our application will start, we'll check for updates, and uh, these events will get fired. So we'll do checking for update, update available, and then update downloaded. So if there's an update, Electron will, will download the zip file. And then so and when it's done, update downloaded will be emitted. And then at this point, we're safe to, to close the application, install the update, and then restart it. So that's why we'll call prompt update. And prompt update is, down, is mostly implemented down here. I'm just using the dialog module to show a message box with two buttons, update and close. If they click update, we're going to call auto updater quit and install. And this, and like I said, this will quit the application, apply the update, and then restart it. Okay, and then one last thing we want to do up here, right now if we tried to run this in development mode, it wouldn't work because for auto updates on Mac to work, you have to have a valid code sign. And we don't have that in development ever. Let's go up here and we'll say is dev. And we're going to check the process arguments. 
and we're going to check if there is a flag passed to our process called dev. And then in our init function, we'll just say if is dev, just return. Then in over in our package.json, we have our start script here. So I'm just going to pass the dev flag here. So that way our auto updater code won't be run in development. Okay. So let's go ahead and build our application. I have a build script already set up. This build script just tells Electron Builder uh, where my code signing certificate is and then just builds the application. So I'm gonna run this. Okay, our build script completed successfully. We already have our auto update server running and it's serving up the next version of our application 1.0.1. So I'm going to go ahead and start our, my 1.0.0 application. I'm going to start it from the terminal because that way I can see all those console.logs that I set up in the auto updater file. So if I start that there, it'll start my application like normal. And you can see it's already, it's already running. So I checked for update. The update was available. It went ahead and downloaded it. And you can see downloaded 1.0.1. And then it prompted, it's prompting me to update the application. So if I hit update here, it closes the application and then restarts it. And you can see our new application version here is 1.0.1. So awesome, it worked. So if we jump over here into our mock update server again, we can just glance at the server logs to kind of see just what, what happened a little bit. So first thing that happened was our application started and Axios, which is our, our HTTP request library, we got our Mac.json file in our client. It got a 200 response and then Semver determined that the update server's version was greater than our local version. And then it returned true here. Has update was true. And then we told the Electron Auto Updater to go ahead and check for updates. The reason we did this is because the native Mac OS auto update framework called scroll.mac, it checks for specific HTTP statuses to see if it needs an update. Anytime scroll.mac gets a 200, it assumes there's an update and will download and apply it. If there's no update, you're supposed to return a 204. Because I require some server-side implementation, I opted to just do that checking in my Electron application to make the server-side easier. That's why here, when our, our Electron JavaScript code determined that there was an update, we told Electron to download the update. It got Mac.json again, and the user agent here is CF network. That's scroll.mac making the request. It saw that there was an update, then it downloaded our zip file. At that point, our application restarted, and we see that it again requested Mac.json. This is happening in our JavaScript from Axios. And then it determined that the versions were equal, so no update was available. So you can see that no other request happened here.